Hello learners, I am Dr. Karuna Harkara Sinha and we are doing integrated learning and teaching. In the last session, we did discuss how to prepare an integrated lesson. What are the steps to be followed while planning an integrated lesson? We did discuss some of the examples of how integration can be brought as far as different subjects are concerned and those examples were discussed under different types of integrated teaching. We had seen some strategies also which can be adopted for preparing an integrated lesson. Let's move ahead now and now we are going to discuss integrated textbook and materials. We know now that curriculum and teaching learning processes can be integrated breaking the boundaries of subjects. But the question with us is that can we have the textbooks also which can be integrated in the same manner in which we have seen the subjects can be integrated. Contents in regular textbooks are theoretical that we all know. The content is abstract and the content is based on the contrived experiences which is really related to the real life experiences of the learners. Thus we can have a look first with the advantages and limitations of a textbook before we really see and discuss that yes we can have the textbooks also integrated. Let's have a look at some of the advantages of textbooks. We all know that a textbook can be used or is usually used as a syllabus for all the students in all the standards. The textbook also helps the teachers as well as the students to keep the time and that is why it is also known as the time regulator. The textbooks provide ready-made learning material to both the students as well as to the teachers also. So they don't have to go anywhere in order to find out the relevant material which is used for teaching the different concepts. We have some of the disadvantages of textbooks also. Now the topics in the textbook may not be relevant or interesting. The textbooks may present idealized worldviews and distort real issues and there are examples where the real issues have been distorted in the textbooks have not been presented from the realistic perspective. We have the textbooks also and they may inhibit teachers creativity because in the classroom the teacher is teaching or using only the textbooks not moving beyond the textbook. So where is the question of creativity being used by the teacher? So yes that is why we say that it inhibits teachers creativity. Learners there are some more advantages of textbooks. In the textbooks the patterns or the structure in learning can help knowledge retention because the content in the textbooks is presented in a structured manner and when the students learn in a structured manner it helps them in the better retention. Students can prepare for lessons ahead of time. They know that which are the topics which are going to come as far as their particular subject is concerned so they can well prepare for those subjects well in advance. Well designed textbooks assure quality lesson plans. The textbooks which are well designed and they assure that the content which is being given in those textbooks is definitely going to be of high quality. Learners, some more disadvantages of textbooks. Now the textbooks may not suit students individual learning styles. We all know that in every class, in every standard, we don't have the learners who have the same learning styles. Researchers have proved that every student has got his own unique learning style and textbooks don't cater to those unique learning styles of students. So yes, it is based on only one learning style. Definitely it is not going to match the intellectual levels of all the students. The textbook may contain inauthentic language also. The distorted language sometimes is also found to be there in the textbooks not giving the correct content 
not giving the realistic content, not giving the appropriate content to the students. So thus we can say that when the child comes to the school for the first time, he or she has acquired a lot of experience like talking freely and expressing his or her thoughts, using appropriate language, knows how to respect others, has developed habits of cleanliness, has simple ideas about the market and several other things. These types of knowledge or experiences are not learned in any compartmentalized manner. So we can conclude that when the child comes to the school, he has got with him lots of concepts which he has not learned in a compartmentalized manner. Those concepts have been connected at home. That is why they are better retained in the mind of the child and he comes to the school with lots of previous experience. So if we analyze any activity of the child, we will find each one integrates several units of concept experiences. All right. So that is what I was saying that if we analyze and if we look at the kind of experiences which the child has, they have not come in one go. They are not related to only one area. They are the integration of several units of concepts and experiences. Therefore, from such analysis, we can realize that integrated learning is very much natural with children and it starts at home only. Thus, in the early grades, activity-based approach supported by integrated textbooks and materials provide facilitating conditions for learning to the students. Now, the things to look for in a good textbook. The textbook should fit the needs of the class as well as the national requirements. When I'm talking about national requirements, they should fit in the national objectives of educational system also. The textbook should contain a variety of interesting topics and tasks with appropriate visual aids. They need not to be only the content written down in the textbooks. They need to be appropriate, suitable, relevant visual aids also in the textbooks. The instructions should be clear and easy to follow. The instructions which are given in the textbook, they need to be very clear and they need to be written down in the language which is understandable to the students also so that they follow them very easily. Objectives in the textbook should be clearly stated and implemented throughout it. So objectives should be in the beginning very much clearly stated and we should find out that those objectives flow throughout the textbook. That means the implementation of those objectives should be seen that they are implemented at every step of the different topics which are included in the book. The textbook should utilize a variety of learning styles because as I said that we have students coming from different backgrounds. They have definitely different learning styles. So textbook should cater to the different learning styles of students. The content should be relevant and useful to the present and future needs of the students also. We need to have such kind of content prescribed, written down in the textbooks, which is really relevant to the present and the future needs of the students also. Because the needs of the students are changing, looking at the changing educational system, looking at the changing world, right now we cannot have the same content written down which we had 10 years before. The content should be relevant and should be updated also. The textbook should encourage students to form their own opinions and learning strategies also. That they should not focus on only the content which has been prescribed in the textbooks. It should provide them scope that they can use their own opinions and they can utilize and use their own learning strategies also. So learners, now let's have a look at some of the characteristics of an integrated textbook. The topics within concepts are sequentially arranged from simpler to the complex concepts. So the topics are arranged different related to different concepts using the maxims of teaching. So we talk about here the maxim of simple to complex. The arrangement of topics and concepts within the topics follow a definite logical order which is mainly based on convenience for teaching. 
At the end of each topic, some questions or exercises are usually given as assignments for students which require invariably written responses. After every topic, an exercise, an activity is being given to the students in the form of the assignments which usually require a written response from the students. The text material is also written in a serious note. There is hardly any humor, cartoon or activity for students to do in these texts because the focus is on the integration. So there is hardly any focus as far as the humor or the cartoon or any activity which is not relevant to the integration. So that is why we say that the material in an integrated textbook is of serious nature. Therefore, we can say that integrated textbooks are usually with the integration which happens between subject areas and those subject areas as mentioned before are either multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary in nature are intended primarily for facilitating learning rather than teaching. The focus, the objective is facilitation of learning rather than the mere teaching which happens in the regular classrooms. The major characteristics of integrated textbooks are the concepts from different subjects are arranged around a theme. As we have seen in the previous session in the various examples that how the concepts from different subject areas are arranged focusing on one theme. The content in the integrated textbook is arranged in the similar form. Each lesson is profusely illustrated with pictures, diagrams and examples. Lots of illustrations are also given in each lesson which can be seen in the form of the pictures, diagrams also and lots of illustrations also. The themes are based on the context related to the real life situations and as such provide ample scope to the student for meaningful learning. The content is arranged into themes and they are mainly the context related themes and the content is related to the real life situations which provide lots of scope to the students for having a meaningful learning experience in the classroom. Each lesson has inbuilt provision of diverse learning activities which have to be performed by the learner while going through the text. That means every lesson has the scope of diverse learning activities which every child is supposed to perform in the classroom while going through the text. There are interactive elements inbuilt within the text which enables a student to interact with others and also with him or her. So there is an inbuilt system element involved into the text which compels a child to have an interaction with others and with himself also. So lots of interactivity happens using the integrated text books. A variety of practice problems spread across the text and not always placed at the end of the text. So we can see that lots of practice problems are also given and they are spread across the text also. It is not mandatory that those practice problems may be given at the end of the text. They may be spread across the text throughout the text and throughout the different topics. All right, learners, now let us sum up what we have studied as far as the integrated learning and teaching is concerned. We have seen that integrated learning refers to education that is organized in a meaningful and holistic manner by association of several related concepts drawn from different subject areas focusing on a broad theme which has real life significance for the learner. This is what we have seen that the content, the concept, the knowledge and the skills from different areas is being integrated into one subject area and which has got the significance related to the real life experiences of the learners. Integrated curriculum is of three types. That's what we have seen associating the concepts and skills within the same subject which is known as the intradisciplinary integration of different subjects which is known as multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary and we have seen the integration which goes beyond the subject which is known as transdisciplinary integration.
learners. We have also seen that integration within one subject area or intradisciplinary integration is a process of integrating where the knowledge and skills of same subjects are connected together during the teaching learning process. So this was a kind of integration where we bring in the knowledge and skills of different concepts but within one subject area and they are being connected together while the teaching learning process or while the teaching learning transaction is happening in the classroom. We have seen transdisciplinary integration which helps in making learning more meaningful, contextual and more real life oriented while reinforcing the curricular learning outcomes through acquiring more skills and competencies than planning. So we have seen under this integration type that the focus is the real life experiences wherein the skills and competencies are planned but the focus is to integrate them with the real life experiences of the learners. Learners, so we have seen the integrated textbooks which have a unique feature for encouraging and enhancing learning by associating various elements and activities. Learners, we did talk about the multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary integrations which are the processes with finer differences of integrating the knowledge and skills of two or more different subjects during the teaching and learning processes. So the concepts, the knowledge, the skills from different subject areas are being connected in one subject area and then they are being used while the transaction happens in the classrooms. Thus students, we can say that several relevant concepts from different subjects, they focus on one theme, are being connected, are being integrated and they get dissolved into one basket. And that is what, when we do that, we talk about the real integrated teaching and learning. And then we say that we have really made the teaching and learning meaningful for the students, where they are going to take lots of content, where they are going to take knowledge, where they are going to take skills from different perspectives with them and making their teaching or giving them a holistic perspective of the content which has been transacted in the classroom. Thank you learners.